Okay, so some of you might want to know what I used in my recipe for my coffee. So I've got this one, Essentials Instant Coffee Powder, two heat uh, tablespoons, and Essentials 100 black tea bag square. And the, there was three, I put three each time. But it depended on how much water I put in, and so it's just in a mug, just in an average medium mug nothing large or small and um, yeah so I'm gonna get that concoction now but like I say, I say it just depends on how I feel on the day I don't actually have a recipe per se um, I kind of understand the way that coffee and tea works in a way but it has a mind of its own so um, it's not like I've measured this out in any way so I just wanted to show you what I use just in case. These are just generic brands, nothing special. So I thought I'd just put it out there just in case. All right, I'll be back. This is the paper that I used. It's nothing special. It's 80 GSM A4. Um, it's just basically plain printer paper. It really is just that. Um, it's nothing special, it's not presentation paper or digital paper, it's just plain paper. And if you want to know the ink that I use, okay, so I have a Canon ink jet printer, and basically these are the colours that are in it. So I don't know if you know much about colours and the way they work, but this is what my Canon, it's a Pixma, uh, actually uses. And so whatever, whatever went into this mix is creating this. So I'm just showing you what I have and what's brought this about. Now I might do this again tomorrow and have a totally different result. I don't know. But I didn't actually print them out black and white, but the images were black and white. So whether my, computer, um, my printer threw in a few more colors, like a bit of extra blue, I don't know. Or there could be blue in the black, I don't know. Print borderless. So printer commands, so your printer has commands and then your computer has commands. How they speak to each other can sometimes bring a different result to the same computer, uh, same printer that you may share with someone in your own household. So my husband gets different results with his printer, I mean his computer command, commands and the way it talks to its printer than to mine. It's weird, I know. But I'm not tech savvy in any way. I'm just letting you know if you have any problems with your computer, with your printer, it could be how your software on your computer is translating the information 
and that's yeah so okay so enough about that I'll be back hey everyone it's the um oh, the 7th of February 2020 it's evening about 10 o'clock um a little bit of a, a run through with these designs um and um when I was um, doing the coffee staining, I did use one piece that was ink jet printed and it left an amazing impression, subtle, but there it was. So what I've decided to do, these are all ink jet printed. Okay, so still look cool um, as it is. Um, but they'll be going in the kit and I'm also going to show you um, some other features of that kit for those of you that aren't in a position to be um, coffee staining so I've got a few things happening for that kit I hope it will all come to pass so let's get on to this so remember we're going to have some mop-up paper I'm just going to put that there and let's begin. So I've got my little paper towel and um, oops. So I'm just going to move those papers out of the way. So I'm just going to start again just putting that down and I'm going to swirl this around. Oops, went a bit over the top there. So yeah, I'm going to start with this paper. Okay. Oh dear, I'm making a mess. It's the only problem with shallow trays. Okay, so see how it's coming off? I don't mind that at all. Because what we're going to do is we're going grab a little bit of that over here and I don't mind a bit of black check it out check that out Woo. now that looks amazing look at that okay so we're going to just leave it and I'm going to lay another piece on the top I'll just pick up what coffee I can find here and I might put another piece so you want to have some plain paper and some um, printed um, ink jet printed paper. that's what it's looking like let's see if we can leave another impression there I'm just going to move these over because they're just going to wrinkle up a bit okay so that's that done all right so let's lay this one down as a foundation and then we'll get our next one you can have one with the dark from the um, one with the black and one just 
you know, ordinary. And I wanted to tell you Um, so this effect was achieved on top and it was quite saturated. So that's what you can do. Once you finish, just put that on there. <laughs> and if you've got a number of them, just spread them around and they'll leave an amazing impression like that. So you don't have to be precious with these um, because they can go straight into your... Um, your journals because what we're trying to achieve is um, some interesting effects left uh, quite a oh this is double sided that's why oh dear <laughs> that's why I'm just going to leave it as is because I'm scared I'm going to disturb the image. Um, so I'll grab this one. So it's going to give it a really rust effect as well. So I'm almost out of this again. I should have put a bit more.
don't worry if it wrinkles like that. It really adds to the drama of a piece. Um, okay, I'm almost dry as a bone here with these. So you can go around picking up your moisture, uh, your brew that's left in corners and that this way as well. But you can mainly do that with your mop-up piece. But you can see um, you can get some groovy effects that way as well. Now I do have one more picture to go, but will I have enough? Um, coffee brew. I'm being really fast and rough with this, so... And I'm not worried that parts of it have that white bit. I just think that can look quite natural. Um, Alright, so let's put it like that. And then this one can go like this. And now Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. All right. So I'm still using the um, tea bags, which have been sitting in coffee as well. capturing the image like this. So it's giving it a really nice kind of colour with the black. And now with my mop-up paper. Okay. So this is my mop-up paper. Just getting the dregs. And if I can grab one more piece. So this is just a little bit more of mop up, mopping up. Uh, which can be really effective.
see if I can get a bit more out of that. Hang on. Um, so the paper towel is also in there as well. Okay, so one more. Just one more. Let's see what I can grab. Wow, still, it's still got fantastic colour. So see how this will kind of cling to the edge? Well, that's how you get that dark um, edge look. Okay, that is that. Now, I'm going to put some tissue paper here. Um, I'm just going to, I don't know why I'm doing it this way. There must be a purpose, but anyway. It's just that I don't want it to, because when I did that other bit, it was on cardstock, so there's no cardstock here, um, but it will hopefully not be too much. Okay. All right. That is that. Okay. All right, everyone. So I'll be showing you the results of this tomorrow. Hopefully it won't be too humid and it will be a lot drier than it's been. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome. It's Jack here from Medieval Mirage. Today is the 8th of February 2020 and I'd like to welcome you. I hope you're all well. Thank you for joining me. Coffee staining with ink gent printers and I have a collection, so I just thought if I call it Silhouette, um, and that's what it is, it's a Silhouette impression on your um, coffee and tea dyed papers. But anyway, so um, I left it overnight, it's, it's 10 to 5 um, in the afternoon, it's a Saturday and it's the um, 8th, 8th of February here in Melbourne, Australia. Okay, so this is what I kind of left it with, um, and it's still damp, not damp, I think underneath is a bit um, wet, but yeah, so like I said, these will still need a bit of drying. <clears throat> now, when I um, printed this, I didn't put it on a black and white setting, so interestingly, the black is coming out blue. Um, so this is what it looks like. So it's again the princess and the pea effect. Um, so some of it did rise up to the top. You can just see it appearing there. Um, where can I put this? I'll just put that there. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, good bit of gold there. So the impressions trying to come through that be it's a beautiful blue beautiful blue color coming through oops and of course we know that this is what um, an ink jet printer does it's not like a laser printer but look at that this is just so amazing so it leaves a ghost impression uh, personally, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and what it's done is, see that, I mean, this was black, remember? But it's taken on the colour of the coffee and tea. <laughs> and that's what's gone into that. It, I mean, it's just so pretty. So, all of you out there... With, I mean, I, I just love it. I, I just absolutely love it. So all of you out there with inkjet printers, look at this. 
it's almost left you know how I was talking about that illuminated effect it almost looks illuminated this one <clears throat> I'm just blown away. That just looks like gold there. I mean, this is all, as you would have seen, black and white. Um, inkjet. And look at that. Oh, my goodness. I I'm just blown away. I I'm just absolutely blown away. Because the black has been replaced with the coffee and tea staining. And it kind of has this faded antique look to it. Is this a double page? It feels like a double page. No? There you go. Okay. So these are still damp. I'll, I'll do another, once they're um, dried properly, I'm going to spread them out um, just to let them dry properly. Wow. Um, there you go that color blue so I don't know if this would happen with everyone's printer um, I don't know if you all get the same results but it's worth trying it out you've got really nothing to lose um, you're just printing things out um, black and white <laughs> and then you're getting these kind of results can you imagine this in a journal I mean how cool is that it's kind of like a I don't know. It's just very antique -y to me. Um, like faded china, old china, antique china. Because you know with china it was blue and white. Um, but yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean the, the china was printed with in a blue. That's very faded. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I love that. It might not be everyone's thing, but I absolutely love that. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. Wow. So, in a journal. Here you go. So, like I said, I don't know if this is going to happen to everyone's printer, but if you follow my technique, and, well, I use a Canon and their inks, but it's turned the ink into this beautiful antique blue. Just absolutely a beautiful, it's not black, because it was looking black, wasn't it? But it's turned it into this magnificent blue. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited to be sharing this with you guys. Oh, it's getting a bit over the top. Now this looks like fine bone china when it was painted. That Those kind of blue kind of embellishments. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Here you'll see that that is full on dark. So that's pretty dark for me. Um, but what I would do, I would leave it, I let it dry, I would leave it aside and I would still use this until I can wash it out. So what I'll do, I'm going to put it over here and we'll come back to that. Because you can see it's still got a lot of the black. A lot of the black is still there. So we could still play with this. Absolutely. When it's dry. Um, <clears throat> but you can see how far the impression has gone. That's why having blank papers between a darker image. I mean, so that's, that's the impression that's left behind. For some reason, it just reminds me of fine bone china. Like old china set with that blue but it's all faded and 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 tinked i'm sure it's something else there but it's just not coming to me yep there you go just an, a gorgeous blue absolutely a gorgeous blue okay and then where does this go
so really 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 excited to be getting this beautiful blue antique blue shabby blue a real shabby blue and it just it just oh you know okay so that's the impression there and of course it's gotten onto there So if blue is your favourite colour or you're doing something for a client who loves blue. Okay, so once again, it's trying to grab, you might be able to see it, it's trying to grab the coffee into itself. Um, yeah, so this one could possibly do with a little bit more work. So that's going to go over there. Wow. Wow. It's just so, it's just amazing. And they're still damp to touch, like not super wet, but just damp to touch. So when they're properly dry, <coughs> excuse me, they'll lighten up a bit. And um oh wow. That is beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay. And now we have that one and that's really quite black but again you can see how it's trying to capture the coffee tea brew so yeah okay that one I'm going to work with again and this looks like the last piece and this was like the mop up page the very bottom of it and you can see it's kind of got that darkness around there um, yeah I'm going to try and scan these and I will do my best to make these available um, I'm really happy to share these with you guys because they're just wow just in case it doesn't work for you um, I'll make these available for sure um, yeah wow So there you go. Wow, look at that. So it's it's replaced the black. It it's soaked up the sorry, it's soaked up the coffee and tea brew into it. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. It's just absolutely awesome. So if you can imagine it in a book. And on this side and people could journal all, all around it if they wanted to absolutely love it and two more to go oh my goodness I know what else it reminds me of it reminds me of a very faded faded Persian rugs that's what it also reminds me of faded like you know sun sun bleached and faded and worn over time and it's just totally robbed it uh, bleached it of its color and only a residue of it's left behind that's what it reminds me of Persian rugs um, oh my goodness it just feels so historical it really does I'm so excited so there you go and it's all thanks to just testing out the inkjet printer and then noticing there was a bit of a residue left over an impression left over I was not expecting it to turn blue I was just not oh love it so there we go I, I'm just blown away I, I'm just blown away so I'm gonna let these dry properly and I'll... hey everyone welcome it's Jaff here from Eddie Mirage it's really lovely to have your company Thank you for joining me today on Monday, the um, 10th of February 2020. Enough about climate change and all that stuff. Um, I just wanted to just um, say that these have been air drying with directional heat since this morning. 
um, and they're getting there. Now I must say they have been a lot slower drying for me and it could be because we have got summer and I haven't got the heater on much but then it's been muggy weather so there's a lot more moisture in the air. Um, but I'm not worried too much about it because um, in this particular technique I I don't mind how long it takes because I really want the results and um, even though I've been fast tracking it with a blow dryer um, I'm quite happy to le let them go because it's a time worn faded bleached effect that I'm going for um, and it's just a little tray so I can have my other big tray doing other things you know the big bi the, the bin the bin um, technique or the container technique um, with my plastic laces and my faux plastic lace and stencils um, and then I can have this going at the same time so it's still in limited space with lots of layers um, but you know um, some of them are going to have a faster turnover than others and this one is a slower turnover because we've really tried to get the transfer of the uh, image, inkjet image on either side and do the princess and the pea kind of effect. Um, and it's required a lot more liquid than say our first tutorial where we were just more just, just getting our papers ready to to use in a printer um, so yeah but it is a shortcut fast track way of just doing something in a little tray which may suit a lot of you for your particular circumstances and needs but anyway I'm really happy to tell you that they are looking amazing so you know you walk away and then they're doing their thing you're not having to um, you know stick around or anything like that and I have to say you know how I've been quite rough and heavy-handed I think this works with this technique because these little creases just adds to kind of like a bit of a aged fabric or aged Persian feel it, it really does add to that antique look um, just beautifully um, so yeah anyway let's keep going um, so I wanted to just unpeel these with you so that you could just have a, a little gander <laughs> um, or a little look um, so I'm going to put these on some paper towel because it's just in the middle a little bit damp but these ones are going to all be spread out not spread out but I'll, I'll layer them um, so that they can be air drying so let's have a look so I haven't unpeeled these myself but look at how the um, I wonder if it picks it up let me go this, I've got the ceiling light on is that going to help isn't that extraordinary so it's like the coffee and tea brew has kind of you know um, replaced the inkjet um, uh, you know ink and it gives it a real kind of faded antique gold look it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful my husband thought it was when I was showing him thought oh that's that's gold I'm going well actually it's not because <laughs> um, it really looks like gold so very antique -y, very old and very heirloomish you know so and then you're still getting these edges because we really did use a lot of the liquid okay oh look I, I have to say I'm in love with um, the results with this and you know obviously you can use any black and white images that you've got with your inkjet printer um, but you really do want to go for something that has that kind of aged look to it so yeah okay so this is getting a little bit um, 
it's still not a hundred percent but oh my goodness it's looking beautiful so I was using the um, wire uh, what is it cake oh I've forgotten what we call it you know the wire cooler the cookie cooler wire thing I don't know and I was putting it in those spots with something underneath it but it wasn't wax paper it was grease proof paper and it went through that it left a few little spots down below but anyway I'm going to get the hairdryer onto this and I'll be back Oh my goodness because it's kind of like a fresco wall effect as well look at that these will look amazing when they finally dry so this one here will probably have the coffee um, soaked inside look at that amazing so let's just do a quick dry over with this one um, first of all just Have a look at this didn't that come out amazingly and see once again the brown of the coffee tea stain has just gone straight into and replaced the black ink and the black ink has released um, this blue kind of tinge that seems to come out with the um, with this you know chemical reaction I guess Oh my goodness, that is just so beautiful. It's an old embroidery. So you can imagine this could be old embroidery <clears throat> pieces like handkerchiefs and table runners and they're all being faded over time. And the ink of the, of the um, actual embroidery thread has stayed though the embroidery thread has disappeared like you know melted away maybe mm -hmm. 
Now I do have my blow dryer on the highest setting only because I want to speed it up but you don't have to, you can put it on a cooler setting. But you know how it kind of rumples the paper? That's cool in this instance, that's good in this instance because you want to get that kind of little bit of a rumpled look but just be careful that your papers don't tear unless you want to get them torn, you know. So, yeah. Okay, so there you go, there's the blue, and then you get the gold. I mean, just beautiful. I just absolutely am spellbound. I really am. It's just so, this technique just blows me away, it really does. So Okay, so there you would have seen me deliberately creating these marks on there. That's the way you can do it. Um, <clears throat> but the best time to do it, and um, these papers are quite crinkly on the inside, um, but the best time to do this is when you're laying your papers. So don't worry if they get wrinkled up um, because you will get, you know, tremendous... Um, patterns which we'll look about look at it later on um, but that's another way of creating that crease effect And like I said, you do not have to be blow drying this at all. You can just let it do its thing. You can just keep peeling the layers off at the top, just like you would with the other method that I've shown you, the, the you know, the container one. Um, yeah, but look at that. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so still a little bit damp, but that's okay um, in the center because we've done a lot of that part of it in the... Yeah, so this is starting to remind me more of like, um, you know, uh, medieval or historical buildings that had plaster and murals on them and they're fading that fresco effect and you know it's developing cracks and the plaster and the paint is all peeling off that's what this kind of page reminds me of yeah that really does remind me of that okay My goodness, see, it's a surprise for me too. Oh, wow. I'm just going to pull these over. Oh, my goodness. Now, those dots are actually in the print. Um, I've left a lot of the dots because I thought if we were gold foiling them, I think it would look really gorgeous. So that's what those dots are. And that's what you'll see sprinkled throughout all these kind of dot effects. Um, they're mostly on the actual image that you print out. So those of you that like that bohemian look but more of that vintage feel, um, this would be great, that kind of paper for that. And here it is.
and there you go. So you get kind of variations um, in, you know, detail. Um, and it kind of is that princess in the pea. It just goes down a few layers, kind of fading in each layer. But just beautiful. So once again, it's it seems to have replaced the um, black ink from the jet, ink jet. Um, with the coffee and tea. So I'm not drying them completely. That's not the purpose. We want to be able to walk away. Um, just for the purpose of the video, I know I keep repeating myself just so that you know, I'm just only getting the process of the um, air drying speeded up for the sake of the video. Okay. Okay everyone, so now I'm going to actually remove this tray and I'm going to let these just sit here and air dry. Um, if you find that some of them are a little bit more wetter than others and you're worried that it may kind of affect the image underneath, it might leave an impression, then just put wax paper or crumple up some um, paper towel and just sort of Put it underneath just to kind of lift it up but I'm not too worried in this instance I'm just gonna <clears throat> I'm just going to you know just crisscross them and let them air dry like this I'm just dropping them down but yeah you can put as I said so you can crumple this up to kind of add a little bit of I don't know um, air, air flow so, and of course we're going to be flattening these under books, so, um, yeah. So if they kind of crinkle up, don't worry too much about it. Where's some, you know, help in the air drying process. So those wire racks that I couldn't think the name of earlier. <laughs> but you can sort of make like a, you know, a bit of a thing where your tray would be sitting. I mean, you could do this on your tray if you wanted to, to keep it in that limited space. Um, put those on, and, and there you go. So we've made a bit of a mountain, <laughs> it's coming up, but still within the parameters of our tray. And like I said, you could do it on your tray. Excuse mine. It was this colour originally, oops, but now <laughs> it'll get washed. But yeah, so what I wanted to say was, so it's still within the tray perimeter and you could do it on your tray. Uh, you could have a wire rack and then layer and then use whatever you want to prop it up so that it gets some air circulated. And you could even just get your blow dryer if you wanted to, just put your hand down but put it on a lower setting, not the, you know, blast out of space kind of speed, but a lower setting just to kind of go where it's, you know, just to get the air circulating through it and let them sit there. And, um, but 
these are what you know were the top layers anyway and they're just sitting there they were sitting under a book and they're nice and flat now so yeah okay everyone thank you for joining me um but um i'm just really happy to be sharing with you the technique or just um <laughs> time worn technique um of coffee staining coffee and tea staining i hope you enjoy and i hope you give it a try thank you everyone i'll see you soon bye